Hey folks, Jonathan Bennett here of Meshtastic Solutions, and I sit down with Eric of Seed Studios to talk about where they come from and where they're going. You may not know that they got their start doing open source hardware modules for makers, really interesting stuff that they still care a lot about. Join us for the rest of the conversation to find out where they're going from here. You don't want to miss it. Welcome, sir. We are so glad to have you today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh, give us give us a brief introduction of of yourself and then the company. How did how did Seed get started? Well, it's a long story because we have been surviving for seventeen years until today. So we have been doing open source hardware from the very beginning. Mm. We provide all kinds of uh, modules to the makers globally. And uh, for the last 10 years, we're exploring very proactively towards industries. How can makers mm -hmm. really use the open source technology for something real, something far in the horizon, like in the wild? Mm -hmm. So we do a lot of uh, smart agriculture stuff. We do a lot of uh, outdoor edge computing uh, like uh, devices. That's where we came into the metastatic story. Yes. Before we before we jump to that though, I'm I'm more interested in yeah. that be, that beginning. So it started 17 years ago. What was the what was like the first product? What was the first thing you did to to get off the ground? We started by making peripherals around Arduino, like having um, all kinds of shields, all kinds of groove modules. Mm -hmm. So if you only with the microcontroller, you can do a lot of things, but it's not far from enough. So what if they want to have a display one? What if they want to have communications? So we give you a different kind of uh, stacks. So you can just put things together and become a prototype. Yeah. So the first stuff we have is uh, accelerometer, like right, for motion mm -hmm. sensing. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and then, then we have a lot of things. A lot of other things. Yeah. yeah. What, what was the point where you realized that you were on to something? Look, a lot of businesses, they get started with an idea and you may have to grind at it for a year or two. And a lot of businesses mm -hmm. fail, but you guys haven't. What was what was the point where you realized that, you know, we've turned the corner and we've actually tapped into something really interesting? I think that's from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We are lucky to and personally very lucky to have this business is I'm a maker. I mm. serve other makers. I get fascinated by the designers who can use electronics for Christians. This is beyond my imagination when I was a um, teenager. So mm. from that Pandora's box opened, we see a lot of Christians because the painters now have all the brushes in their hands. They can make all kinds of interesting experiments, either it's art or science right. or it's uh, solutions. So we see endless interesting things popping up. Yeah. And uh, years later, some of them are becoming a very, uh, very huge business, like uh, Jones, like uh, we are 3D printing. All the things we started being interested with the community 10 years ago, now mm -hmm. many of them becoming a very interesting trend. So this has been excited us all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was I was told that you are something of an outdoorsman, and I'm curious: is that sort of how you discovered Meshtastic? Uh, I think it's kind of uh, destiny, <laughs> because uh, I'm a very outdoor. Like I do all kinds of biking, hiking, snowboarding, surfing. Mm -hmm. I travel kinds of outdoor sports, uh, camping for sure. So then. Um, I feel so familiar whenever we want to do some outdoor IoT sensors. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were very determined. I, I know how big the world is outside of civilization. So I said, okay, let's do some sensors to get more real world data out of people's reach for today. Yeah. So that's where everything started. Uh, and uh, we see a lot of challenges mm -hmm. because outdoor is very different from indoors. Yes. You, you need to worry about a lot of uh, protections. How do you use for uh, for the winter, for the summer, the super strong sunlights? Mm -hmm. How do you deal with the storm Her and herbicides, the chemicals? Yeah. So there's so many things into intertwined together and uh, we feel a lot of makers cannot do by themselves. So we help them to push to a grid they can focus on their applications and leave all the heavy lifts to us. Mm -hmm. You know, that's- so It's very, very net. Yep. Yeah, that, that's something we saw. Um, so here in the United States, we have something called Burning Man, which is 
a group yeah. of artists getting together literally out in the desert. And last year, Meshtastic yeah. was very pop uh, popular to bring there, but everybody had their PLA printed cases. And we got pictures back of those things mm -hmm. just melted in the heat. Some of them look like they've been through a sandblaster. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, having something that's actually sealed against the elements and is not going to melt is a, is a big deal for things like that. Mm hmm um, I, we did a lot of testing. We saw that happen. We see that our devices filled with water. I, I happen to have one of them here. The uh, it's the T one thousand E, the sense cap that runs Meshtastic. It's a great little Pleasure. device. Uh, it is, from what I understand, it is it is waterproof and it's not going to melt. Um, there is actually some feedback from the Meshtastic devs in, in putting this thing together, if I understand correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's the? I I was not actually around for that. What's the? Do you do you know the story there? Uh, you mean the beginning of the T one thousand? Yes. Uh, we started by make. Before that, we were making sensors like this. Mm -hmm. So it's big. I don't like it because I cannot carry it around. <laughs> this is for agriculture. But whenever you go to scenes like Burning Man or you go to snowboard a uh, uh, band country, you need some complications. How about we make it smaller and I can carry it around? So that's where the tracker idea is coming. Yeah. And uh, our engineers are very serious. They want to keep it as uh, uh, slim and as professional as possible. So we squeeze all the things into this, this tiny shell. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's impressive. It's really done well. Um, Thank you. So, uh, what uh, what do you see on the on the horizon for for, for Seed mm -hmm. for Meshtastic for the IoT world in general? What is the uh, what's the next trend that you're you're looking to catch? I think the trend is just uh, started. There's so many things not connected, mm -hmm. and the technology is uh, one on one hand to make it much easier, but on the other hand is uh, the interactions. How to use them? For now, you need to download all the apps. You have to talk with all, you have different apps, different configurations mm -hmm. with the home automation. It's, it's, it's too complex. I cannot teach my mom, so I, I don't think it's going, it's not, it's still waiting for its iPad moment. Yeah. So people can use it very interactively uh, and with the intuitions. But I think from 10 years ago, we are trying to come up with, a, um, how to say, a experience is you can talk to things like you are talk to a human. Hmm. Maybe not talking in the beginning, but by texting. You imagine a text to your friends when we were a child. Hmm. You send an SMS, get a reply, but you can still send messages to other things. With, with Mastastic, with the app, I think it's, it's getting there. Hmm. For, for example, if you can text or if with a message you can send a, a message to your sensors, a weather station, or a tracker, you can ask for its coordinates. You can ask for the information. You can config like AT command, but through this very native conversational way. Mm. So I think in the, in the near future, this could be a, a very easy breakthrough. It's more on the user experience part. People believe that they can talk to more things and uh, it's so easy. It's like if you, you are using SMS. Yeah. So it's going to be very much infrastructure free. You don't need a centralized server of everything. You, you very natively, you have some uh, uh, firmware with dialogue tree inside and you can talk to it. So I, it's, I think this is something very, uh, very close that we, we want to try. But of course, there are more devices. People want to uh, use Metastastic with all kinds of uh, form factor, mm -hmm. a tracker. It's good, but it's far from enough. So we are having more open source modules. We are making them uh, uh, open. So we have so many makers community and they can feel free to 3 print more, but try not to use PRA, but use Lilo or use other devices, uh, other materials. I, so I think I it's have, time. <laughs> oh, you have it. I have one of those. I, I really like this. Um, we are also working on a UI refresh, and this has actually been one of the devices that has been a uh, uh, an inspiration because it's got that joystick on there. And this, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Your, your idea about being able to use devices without having an app connected, uh, that UI refresh with this thing really, 
uh, it's be, it's beginning to approach that point. I'm I'm very excited about it as well. Hopefully, hopefully we're looking forward to that. Hopefully, we'll have a preview of that out within the next few days. By the end of the week is the mm-hmm. plan. And I think with this kind of fun factor, we should have done this earlier, even before the tracker is. Okay, we have a huge community of makers, mm-hmm. half a million direct customers. They all know how to program with Arduino, <laughs> how to print. They have their scenarios. Yeah. I think it's very easy to get them excited, build something, and get things talking mm-hmm. with mesh statics. And we can see a lot of fleet of all kinds of things coming. And see, one thing that is unique about it is we are very good at helping people to wrap up their creations. Mm-hmm. We help people to go from prototype to uh, productions. So we, can, we hope that we can enable um, a big jungle big ecosystem around the metastatic. Not only people use metastatic freely, but they can create freely. So this is uh, something I think it's intertwined. It's both the communication or between different devices with metastatic becoming even easier. Mm -hmm. Really uh, organically, without teaching, without training, you can just text as if you are text to a person then people can create endless devices that can work together. It's mm-hmm. just going to be phenomenal. Yes. Yep. Looking forward to it. Uh, I understand that there was an event, a seed event there in China very recently. Um, were you were you at that? Are you aware of it? Yeah, of course. I, I didn't go there personally, okay. but I saw all the live streamings, all the videos that has been very, very exciting. I didn't realize that so many people in Shenzhen, because Shenzhen is a very city mm-hmm. like it's very difficult for us to really test my static there's no right. wild areas without coverage unless <laughs> we go to the oceans <laughs> so it's very rare for me to see so many people uh, attracted for the first time yeah did, did the event i go- want to do this again we want to do more of this event in the real wild yes we don't have burning man in china but we have uh, wild areas in Chengdu or deep into the snow mountains mm-hmm yeah, Maybe we should do a live stream next time, Leo. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, one, of the, one of the other things that we have a lot of fun with is we have some big conventions where a lot of people go. And uh, there's one called Black Hat. Last year, we had like mm-hmm. f- 1,500 Meshtastic devices all together in the same place. And that, that <laughs> yes, that was the biggest gathering of Meshtastic that we've ever had. And uh, we're just a couple of months away from Black Hat this year. And I've been talking to some of the people that will be there, and there's a chance that we're going to break some records and have even more people. It's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be a lot of fun. Wow, looking forward to it. Yes. I'm wondering what's the channel you the the channel utilization. What we do for these events is we we change the default um, the the default okay. preset. And so for Black Hat this year, we're actually going to use the Turbo preset, which is basically the fastest we can make Laura talk. And then we also do some mm-hmm. other things. We tell the devices, you know, don't announce as often. And we tell people, you know, if you bring more than one device, one of them should be essentially muted and not replaying packets. All to, 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 to try to fight that very thing to get the channel utilization down. Because everybody's sharing the same airwaves. You can only do so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although, I've got a little project that uh, might help eventually. And that is, I am going to try to build a Meshtastic router so that you can have multiple mm-hmm. different... Uh, because we've got Meshtastic now running on native Linux. And so I've got this idea mm-hmm. that you put multiple LoRa devices on one native Linux box and then build a little bit of router mm-hmm. software in the back end so it can sit there and go, oh, this is a direct message off of this network, but it's assigned to a, r- a node that's on this network. Let me just yeah. sit here and pass them back and forth. So I'm, I'm excited about eventually getting that off the ground and then... The sky is sort of the limit. We can make huge interconnected, like a meta mesh. It'll, it'll be fun. I, I, we, we have been trying a very similar approach because when we're trying to use uh, Mastastic to, for the hazard response, mm-hmm. and we made a, a pack with a Linux inside with a, a Raspberry Pi and a display and a, a bridge between Mastastic, mm-hmm. or WAN, Wi Fi, Bluetooth. Yep. We, and the backend was done with no red. I think it's mm-hmm. going to be very critical. It's going to be a, a really making this into a, a hybrid network with a, a command center, but all the field applications easily. Mm-hmm. So please do that. 
I will. Uh, I'll drop you guys a link when I have it. When I have something working, something to look at. Uh, it'll it'll be a lot of fun. Um, all right. So we've talked a lot about uh, about seed, about mesh tastic. Is there anything I didn't ask you about that I really should have? Not too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're happy to do so many things, but I think uh, um, there is a key approach we are looking at too. Mm-hmm. It's about sports tech. Uh, how mm-hmm. can we really use mesh tastic with sports, ah. especially for outdoors? And I think um, we tried many, like uh, we talk to climbers, like rock climbers. Mm -hmm. We go to cave explorers. We go to uh, slowboard uh, KOL. Mm -hmm. Many people are still not aware of this technology yet. Do you snowboard? Like when they go to very bad country areas, they need some beacon, which was invented like 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. It's expensive snow and it's outdated. I show them the tracker. We show them the the mastastic uh, the, the solar repeaters, mm-hmm. and the, they're amazed. They never seen this and they never realize it's becoming so cheap and so free. I think we what we are trying to do with you with all the communities. How can we push it beyond the community? How can we push it to the people who are really using it? I. I'm super excited about this, mm-hmm. and uh, we ha- we are building uh, many like uh, uh, activities around that. We have our uh, a very small invest investment fund for any applications. So if there is any specific downstream applications people need support, please let forward them to us, and we like to help them to success in like uh, farming or bank countries, snowboarding, or mm-hmm. it can be a very niche applications. I think we need some stars, some role models to enlighten people. Okay, mesh plastic is not only something you can try in the wild, it's something you really mm-hmm. change some industries with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I, uh, I I think I agree. I think we're sort of waiting for that that moment. We've we've had that moment in some ways with like the obviously the the backcountry hiking because that's what mesh tastic was originally designed for and we've had it mm-hmm. here in the united states at least with like the disaster response thought because when you when you show that show mesh tastic to someone and that's what they're thinking about they they immediately get it um what we've yeah. not what we've not really had is a breakthrough in sort of the industrial space and it's it's coming i'm confident it's coming it's just a matter of mm-hmm. you know the right opportunity and the right person coming together and and making it yep. work and then it's yeah, it'll be fun. It'll it'll all break loose at that point. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. All right. Well, Eric, I appreciate the time coming and taking the taking the time to talk with us. I, I feel like we're going to have to do it again here in a few months and talk about what's changed because things are changing fast. Um, but I appreciate yes. it very much. It was great to it was great to meet you in person. Well, v- virtually in person for the first time. Virtually. And great to talk to you. All right. Thank you so My much. My pleasure.